Pretty good, and yourself? Doing well, doing well. Have you been able to scrimmage anyone yet? And if so, how is that going? Uh, no, we haven't. Um, I think uh, Fish is just still taking his time, uh, trying to make sure everybody is on the same page. So uh, we're really one day at a time. Hey there, Rapana. Hey, so um, I guess what, I, what have you seen from Christine so far in, in your time together in the, in the bubble on the court? Uh, she's definitely determined. Uh, she worked every day with uh, CP, so uh, that's probably the, the best post she could be on there and, and far as elevating her game. So uh, she's got to be great for us this year coming off the bench and um, playing behind CP because she's getting better every day. Uh, we'll go over to Tukni with the LA Times. Uh, hey, Raquana. So, uh, Coach Fisher has been talking a lot about the importance of building relationships going into his second season with the team. Obviously, it's a different circumstance with you guys being in the bubble, but how much time do you guys spend together as a team outside of just practice compared to normally? And how important is that outside of basketball time in terms of building those relationships? Uh, this past Sunday, we actually had Taco Sunday. Um, Courtney, our trainer, she's been on us still about uh, keeping six feet apart, but she she figured like if we're in practice going hard at each other, us hanging out and bonding and making sure everybody's on the same page wouldn't be a problem because I, I think off the court is really what's going to gel on the court um, outside of the skills, um, knowing each other, uh, knowing when you can step to a person and knowing when they need just two or three minutes to regroup. Um, I think it's going to be key for us. John, go ahead. Hey, Raquana, John W. Davis here. Another question for you. Uh, the Sparks, you guys have 12 in your training camp right now. I know some other teams only have 11 on their rosters. Some have, you know, 10 in camp or even less. What type of advantage do you think it will be in the beginning of the season that you'll have, you know, 12 players to run out there in these first few games as everybody's still working their way back into the game of basketball? Uh well, we're no longer in the train account mindset. Uh, this is the 12 we have and we're rolling um, and we're getting everybody up to speed that wasn't here with Coach Fish last year. Uh, so it's no longer train account for us, regardless of where we are um, on the schedule. Like we're rolling, this is the 12. Time for two quick more. I uh, will bounce back to Miriam. Hey, Raquana, so who, uh, who made the tacos? <laughs> on Sunday and then um, also is there anyone who's surprised you with how they showed up just like either being in really good shape or added something to their game or just something you didn't know about? Uh, Chelsea and our wife uh, made the tacos. Um, I think we've been trying to do uh, at least one person like once a month or whatever weekend or day we have off that person decide what we're going to do for team bonding. So Chelsea and our wife uh, picked Taco Sunday. Uh, as far as like Everybody coming ready and prepared. Uh, like we're all on the same page and everybody is equally working and getting up shots before um, doing weight room stuff. So everybody is really in one accord. All right, I don't see any more hands. Thank you so much, Rapana. No problem. Thank you guys. All right. Oh, oh. oh there we go. All right. All right, Sophia, there see you. There we go. All right, we'll start with Miriam Swanson, LA Daily News. And then also, um, I guess you guys. I can't hear you, sorry. Sorry, the, uh, the audio is a little bit off. Miriam, let me try one more time. You try right, sorry, one more time from the top. <laughs> All right, so I wanted to ask about Taco Sunday. Uh, uh, <laughs> the importance of events like that for the team. Taco Sunday was cool. We had a great time, played some games. Uh, we did a little bit of a spelling bee. Um, so we tested people's ability to spell. It went a little, it was okay. But um, it was overall pretty good just to get everybody in one place, you know, off the court and kind of just have fun with it. Um, but it was good kind of team bonding experience. Uh, John W. Davis, Windsider. Hey, Chelsea, how's it going? Good, how are you? Good. First of all, I wanted to say definitely enjoyed 
you know, your answers and your energy during media day. I thought you did a great job. Thank you. You're welcome. And I wanted to ask you, so over or under, you got 22 games, over or under, 22 no-look passes. <laughs> oh, man. Um, I probably have more than 22, honestly. And what's the – and if I can continue, what is the, the, the mindset on, like, again, as you continue to grow in the league, like, when to do it and when not to? I think that's been, like, the challenging factor the last three years or so of when to be able to do it, time to score, all that, and be able to pick my spots. Um, I want to have a lot better assist to turnover ratio this year. Um, but I think that also comes with, you know, the mindset of, you know, not having to do it all of the time and making the simple play. And that's something that I'm trying to improve on. Um, of the, you see like a little bit of a window and if it's too late, not to really chance it. So um, just having that balance out there of when to pick my spots, when to actually do that, um, I think it's key. Uh, Tuk Knee with the LA Times. So uh, going back to Taco Sunday, uh, <laughs> Coach, Coach Fisher has talked a lot about kind of the importance of relationship building. So just having those types of things, how important are those for the season, uh, for you guys going into the season, but also what words were in the spelling bee? Were they basketball words or just random dictionary words? No, there were one. So, so I researched like, a, uh, like 10 to 15 words um, that were commonly misspelled. Um, and some of them got it, some of them didn't. We split up in teams. And there were words like accommodate um immediately uh let me think of another one inconvenience um conscientious right so those kind of words that we say all the time but we're just like wait a minute without our phones can we really spell these words and it's kind of fun and uh a joke a little bit but also i, I feel like i'm you know mental focus you know helping people's mental so it was just fun and a, a different type of game instead of like the same games um it's what I wanted kind of to do. And uh, it was pretty good. And people have fun with it. People were engaged. So it was just fun and games. And people love the food. So that was also a plus. Who won the spelling bee? Dang, who won the spelling bee? It was a team. I, I can't remember the team off the top of my head, but it was a team. It was good, though. It was close. We'll it was to, close. It was real close. Yeah. Go to Leah Secondo is going to be one of our broadcasters this year on non-ESPN games. Thanks for your time. Uh, as far as, as what you guys did today in practice, can you kind of take us through uh, what you did and give me a grade on how you think you did today? <laughs> um, for today, I think we put in some new things offensively and defensively. Actually got our reps, got some shooting in um, to be able to repair that word. You know, we're less than a week out from our first game. Um, we're playing on Saturday. We got to be mentally prepared, physically prepared, but also knowing the terminology, everybody be on the court, getting that camaraderie. So I think today was mostly about implementing some new things, working defensive schemes, um, not in particular Phoenix, a little bit uh, of Phoenix stuff, but also just, you know, having the terminology, getting those reps of guarding pick and roll, guarding staggers, guarding handoffs, all those types of things that every team is going to do. Um, but we did focus a little bit on Phoenix, um, on certain movements. But today was um, defensive effort, but also implementing some new offenses and some different flow opportunities and mix and matching the matchups and the people out there on the floor. So it was, it, it was good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, that's good for tonight. Thank you so much, Shelby. Thank you, everybody. All right, questions for Christina Nigway. We will start with Delmi Barrios. Delmi, you with us? Okay. I'll go over to John W. Davis with Windsider. John? Yes, I got you. Hi, Christine. If hey, you have an I'm doing well. If you have an opportunity to scrimmage this week, what are you looking forward to accomplishing personally in those scrimmages? Um, just building team chemistry, um, getting a lot of rebounds, finishing, and just getting a win, honestly, like getting that confidence before our first game up 
this weekend. Uh, we'll go to Duke Me with the LA Times. Chelsea just told us you guys haven't really gotten into Phoenix quite yet, but so far um, at this point in the in the week, knowing that they'll you'll be playing them first on Saturday, what do you know about them and the roster? What kind of challenges could they present to you guys? Definitely, Phoenix is a really good team. Um, they're very talented, and we're just trying to get our own chemistry working like working together and we understand the importance of this game. So I think for us, we're just staying focused on ourselves and knowing they're a talented team and just trying to um, be the best versions of our own selves for right now. Uh, Miriam Swanson, LA Daily News. See if that audio is a little better this time. Hey, Christine. Hey. So the other day, the other day uh, Brent Griner said that you and she had, had talked things through and that you guys actually had worked out together and, and done some runs in, in the Phoenix area. Yeah, we Can you did. tell us about that? Yeah, it was cool. Um, we definitely have, like, we're cool. Um, we are able to play 505. We were able to um, talk, like, before that and build, like, not <laughs> – I'm sorry, um, awkward question, but we're cool. Um, we'll end with one more question. We'll go to John W. Davis with Windsider. Hi, Christine. Yes, I was going to ask again what Miriam was talking about. Um, so you were able to meet up because, you know, that was one of the, unfortunately, that was one of the biggest stories of the year in the WNBA was that skirmish or fight or whatever you want to, well, first of all, how do you define it? Because some people say it was a fight. Some people just say it was kind of like a mix up. How do you, how do you define it? And then uh, again, kind of talk about, you know, everything being squashed before you go into this game and you know, you're not necessarily, nobody's looking for revenge against each other or anything like that. I'm definitely just trying to win the game. And I feel like um, winning the game will just speak volumes. And obviously, like, she is a really good athlete and just a player in general. So I'm really excited to play against her. Um, I have no bad blood with her. So I'll just be like playing anybody else in the league. All right. Thank you, Christine. We'll start with Duke Nee with the LA Times. Hey, Coach, we were just talking with Chelsea and Raquana about Taco Sunday. Um, and considering how much you've talked about the importance of uh, building relationships, uh, how important are those types of events? And what kind of other maybe out of the box, out of the ordinary team bonding events have occurred so far? And how do you think they've gone? Um, yeah, no, I mean, I, I think they're very important to, uh, you know, team and group success that uh, you can have some moments that, uh, allow you to see each other more as human beings than as teammates only. Uh, and, you know, it, one of the positives I think of, of kind of living this campus lifestyle is that type of experience, right? Where instead of, you know, the ladies being at home, you know, with family and other responsibilities and things that typically pull teams uh, apart during the season, uh, you know, they in some ways have no choice but to rely on uh, hanging with each other, getting to know each other, spending time with one another. And so those things are important. Um, it happened organically. Uh, you know, I think it was Chelsea's call to my understanding, um, you know, to make it happen. But the team has been, they've been communicating together very often. So um, we're not privileged enough to see what goes on in their group chat. Uh, so I'm sure they have some other stuff planned that we have no idea about. <laughs> Uh, John W. Davis, Windsider. Hey, Coach, how's it going? Good, good. How you doing, John? Doing well. I can ask you about something that you should know the plans for. Can you talk to me about if you plan on scrimmaging this week with any other teams? And if you do, what would you like to accomplish by doing that? Um, I mean, as of now, we may not you know, really get the opportunity to, we, uh, we reached out to a few teams about uh, possibly doing that tomorrow. And um, I think a couple of teams already had, uh, you know, teams they were scheduled to go against and uh, a few other teams are, you know, they're supposed to get back to us, but um, 
you know, we may not get a chance to do that as a group. Um, but I, I think we've been in a, a bit of an advantageous position in terms of having 11 and 12 players um, in training camp compared to a number of other teams that only have nine players. A couple of teams have been down to eight or seven on a lot of days. Uh, so scrimmages are really their only way to get any five on five or even four on four type of activities. So we've been fortunate enough to get some of that in our own practices without having to, to play other teams. And, you know, we'll see how it works. It's obviously not the perfect scenario, but we're better off with all of our players being available on Saturday than not. And I, I don't know how I would feel if Candace or Necker or Chelsea Bay, somebody went down, you know, with an ankle sprain in a scrimmage that didn't really, you know, mean that much and probably wouldn't move us that far ahead. Like no matter what we try to do to, between now and Saturday, uh, these ladies have not played basketball since last season. And some of them played overseas a little, a little bit of Team USA, but uh, it's going to take a while before we look like we know exactly what we're doing, which is goes back to the tacos. Um, it's because if you care about the person next to you, you won't watch them struggle, right? You'll, you'll, you'll be there for them. You'll still find a way to help them be successful. And we're going to have to rely on a lot of that uh, until we get some conditioning and timing rhythm. Over to Leah Secondo. Hi, Coach. Uh, if you could just kind of elaborate on, on that a little bit more on practice today and getting the rhythm and what you felt you accomplished today in practice and give it a grade or however you want to size uh, it up. Yeah, no, I think, I mean, grade-wise, it was, for me personally, it was probably just okay. I don't know. C is the best, you know, it's right in the middle. Um, the players were A, um, but – as a coach, you don't want to kill your team's sweat sometimes, you know, if it's going good. And if you try to teach a little too much or you try to, you know, introduce a few things that kind of cools them off, uh, especially for some of our veterans, you know, that happens quick. So, um, uh, so for myself, you know, I feel like I could have tried to keep it going a little more in terms of activity with, with a few things we were working on, but it was important for us to introduce a few things make sure we have some connection on, you know, out of bounds situations, some of the things we want to do in the half court uh, to start the season. And so, you know, we, we wanted to introduce some of those things and it, it was important to do. Uh, we'll get a chance to come back tomorrow and have a great practice in terms of, you know, high, high intensity. And then we'll see where everybody is as far as what we do Thursday uh, and in preparation for Friday uh, in terms of being kind of shoot around because our game is at 3 p.m. on on Saturday. Time for two more tonight. We'll go over to Delmi Barrios. Hey, Coach. Good to see you. Um, shifting gears a little bit, big news coming out of L.A. this morning as pro women's soccer is returning to L.A. As someone like yourself who's been a part of the sports culture here in L.A., how do you think that this, this could potentially um, evolve that culture in the city? And how do you think that it could elevate, help elevate women's sports? Um, yeah, no, I was excited, actually, when that popped up. You know, I was breaking news earlier uh, today. Um, yeah, really excited that uh, the ownership group, uh, typically ownership groups are not that large um, in terms of the number of people that they have listed as, as part of the group. But I liked it and love it because of how many women are involved in the ownership group, right? It, it, it's, it's one thing to bring a uh, National Women's Soccer League team to LA, um, but if it's not really led by women and run by women and women making decisions about uh, how players are going to be treated, the culture of the organization, et cetera, then, you know, we're just doing more of the same thing in a sense. So I was excited about it. Congratulations to everybody involved. Um, you know, assuming they don't play the same day we play, I'll, I'll be there um, uh, when, whenever the season starts. Um, and I think it's a great thing. Uh, the sports culture in L.A. has evolved tremendously uh, over the last several years. And I think as a city, we should be proud to uh, have a team uh, of women that can represent LA. It is one of the most diverse cities in the world. Uh, and 
young girls and women in LA and all around the world need to see women in powerful positions, owning businesses, owning sports teams, uh, being excellent on the court, making decisions in the boardroom. Uh, I have two daughters. I want them to not only, if they want to be great athletes, cool, but if they also want to own a sports team, then, you know, we need to support these type of teams to make sure they have a chance to be successful um, and, and, you know, do concrete action things that will make a difference. So whatever I can do to help, whether it's going to games, you know, hopefully there are things that we can do in terms of cross promotion. Um, you know, we're no longer the only professional sports women's team in LA. Uh, and, you know, for a long time, we're the only sports women's team, professional team in California, period. Uh, so we're happy to have this kind of company and, um, you know, hopefully our fans will go to their games and their fans will come to our games. Tell me you had a very quick follow up. Yes, just on that note. So I'm assuming you'd be open for some type of collaboration or partnership if it came down to that. Yeah, I mean, if they need me to get out there and show them how to kick a soccer ball around and um, do some head touches and things, I'm, you know, count me in. Um, in terms of cross promotions and collaborations, that's for Eli and Natalie and Danita and uh, and everybody hmm. back in the office. And I, I, you know, they just tell me where to show up. So um, <laughs> that's probably as much as I could say there, but definitely open to it. I think it's important. Um, oftentimes, you know, women get pitted against women in a sense, right? Competing for the same things, the same space and as we work to create more space within the media landscape to cover women, to tell great stories, and we have to support what they're doing in order to have it make sense. And then when we put that energy into the world, into what they're doing, then it comes back to the sparks and it's win-win for everybody. Last question uh, over to Miriam Swanson, LA Daily News. Hi, Derek. Uh, hey, so I just wanted to check in and see how Christine has looked in the in the first bit here. I know it sounds like she's learning a lot from Candace. Oh uh, yeah, no, Christine is uh, what you call the prototypical basketball sponge. Like she literally is nonstop uh, calling coaches, calling teammates. She wants to watch film. She wants to come back and shoot at night. She wants to go over early and shoot. She wants to watch film before COVID testing, after COVID testing, after lunch, after practice. Um, it, it's, it's been a joy to work with her. Um, you know, she's learning a lot. Uh, this is her third team in one year, basically. Uh, so, you know, try for a young player having three different ways of doing things, you know, going on in your brain. Um, and that's a lot. And so she's trying to absorb as much as possible. That typically slows people down when they're overthinking. Uh, so what we're really trying to do as much as possible with Christine and all of our players, uh, you know, that are new to our group, especially, um, is to give them enough information to uh, provide a foundation, but not take away their natural gifts and abilities and talents that already exist. And I think that's important for all basketball players and possibly Christine more than anybody on our team because of how gifted she is without you telling her to do anything. Um, and if we can find ways to help her and help her fit into what we do, um, I, I think she can provide tremendous value for us. All right, thank you so much, coach. All right, thanks everybody.